So this is a, a van that uh, doesn't run. It's uh, electric. We're delivering this this morning. What do you guys think? There's the batteries. Given that's how we live it, don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be in a... What's going on, people? What's going on? First of all, I just want to say thank you very much for being here uh, on this channel. And uh, if you haven't subscribed and all that stuff, you want to do so, hit the bell. It's up to you, whatever. But this video, man, is just giving you guys a heads up, man. Just giving you guys a heads up. So... Um, like I said, months and months ago, the CB19 situation, and this is common sense. This ain't that I'm the smartest wizard in, in, in the trucking realm. It's just, if you pay attention and you have some common sense, it's going to make a lot of sense what I'm about to say. So let's get to it. Um, when the country shut down, guess what? When the country shut down, uh, shut down, everybody was still eating, everybody still buying stuff, everybody was still doing their thing, right? Now, when everything was shut down, obviously, um, at the time they weren't buying cars and all the fun stuff, but they were buying foods and necessities and all that kind of stuff because you can't stop that, right? Well, then they opened up, what? 10% or 20% or whatever it was. But everybody is still buying everything 100%. And I told everybody it's going to come to the point to where we're going to be lacking stuff to haul. You know? Again, I'm not no trucking wizard. This is just common sense. So common sense is, you know, if you got 20 gallons of water on your patio... And you invite all, the, invite all the neighbors to come drink water. And nobody's replacing that 20 gallons of water. What happens? You run out of water. So, I know that's a crazy scenario. But that's the same thing what's going on. Um, people are still sitting home collecting unemployment checks. You guys got to realize. People that work in these warehouses. And and different places like that. You know. They don't, they don't make... Where they're getting on unemployment. I mean, I was hearing they're getting unemployment. It was like a thousand dollars, thirteen hundred dollars a week. Unemployment to sit home. So if these warehouse workers are working their butts off, staying away from their families for eight to ten hours or whatever, and making eight hundred dollars a week, do you think they're gonna go back to work? So now they extended unemployment until September, I heard. But people still are not at work 100%. And so what's going to be happening in this trucking community, and I really want you guys that have truck payments and trailer payments or expensive housing or uh, personal bills, try to get out of it. Try to get out of it. I'm telling you, listen to my words. Try to get out of it. Because the freight will start getting limited. I know what you're saying. There's no way, SoCal. People got to eat. People got to. Okay. But listen, people. Listen. Listen. When you go to these Walmarts and you go to all these places and you go get the Lunchables or the. Uh, what is that stuff called? To. Uh, Top ramen noodles or or uh, any of that kind of stuff, right? That's all. That's all from a warehouse. That all, you know, was wrapped somewhere. It was all that was going on. If people are not working, even though yeah, we got to eat. Who's there to put the food together? Think about it. You go buy a gallon of milk. If people ain't milking the cows, and if people ain't doing what they do to the, the milk before they bottle it up, 
And then if people ain't at the warehouses or whatever, manufacturing plant, to put the milk inside that one gallon thing and put the lids on it. Even though we all want to drink milk, if none of that happens, then tell me how in the world are we supposed to go haul the stuff and put them on the shelves? So, think about all that. So yeah, we need to have milk. We need to eat food. We need to do all that stuff. But just because we need all that stuff doesn't mean we're guaranteed to have all that stuff. And the crazy thing is a lot of people really don't pay attention to what's going on. Really don't. All you guys that pay cash for trucks, you guys are alright. Even even with worst, worst, worst case scenario, and all shit breaks loose, you guys are going to be alright. But for those of you guys that are making big payments on trucks and trailers and, and all that, and your truck goes to the shop, and they don't have your parts, and it's going to be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, four months before you get your parts to your truck. Do you have the money in the bank to keep making your trailer payment, your truck payment, your house bills, and everything until it comes out of the shop? I hope you guys are taking heed of my message, man. I, I'm not sitting over here just because I like to hear myself or because I, li I like to drop a video. That's, that's not the case at all. I'm truly trying to warn you guys. It's going to get to a point, and I really hope I'm wrong, but if I'm not, it's going to get to a point to where you'll see the loads on the load boards. You'll see the loads everywhere, and um, you're going to show up. You're going to show up and they get loaded and they're going to say, you know what? We don't have enough to complete this load. And you're going to just be sitting there. You know, you waste half your day waiting. You burnt, I don't know how many miles to get there. Now I got to find another load. And eventually it's going to get to the point where that's going to start happening more and more and more often. And let me ask you truckers a question. What happens... If you keep showing up somewhere, burning fuel, burning time, burning up everything, and you show up to a shipper and to find out that they don't have all of your order or what you need, and you got to go somewhere else and go somewhere else, and then you look at your whole week of gross, your whole week of what you netted, put in the comments, what do you think is going to happen? Can you guys survive that? I know. I know. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I, I, I get it. But I'm just asking you guys to be aware. If I'm right or if I'm wrong, just be cautious, be ready. You know what I always say. If you stay ready, you don't got to get ready, right? And uh, I really think just in case we all need to get ready for this. I know I'm getting ready. Absolutely getting ready. So the question is, are you? Do you guys think just because we have to eat, we have to go to the grocery store, we have to, that there's just going to be food there because, because we have to eat? All that pre-manufactured food stuff on the shelves, all that man-made stuff, please use your common sense. If people ain't there working... And doing that man-made food, doing all that man-made packaging, doing all that stuff. As much as you need it, do you think it'll be ready to haul it? Do you think it'll make it on the shelves? Let's, let's use another example, people. The toilet paper situation. You remember when the CV thing came out? What happened? Yeah, we all need toilet paper, right? We all need toilet paper. We all need... Uh, we can all agree, right? Let me know in the comments. Put a one in the comments. Do we all use toilet paper? Do we all need toilet paper? I'm asking for a friend. But what happened? When everybody found out about the CV-19, for some crazy reason, everybody had to go get toilet paper. And when everybody did, what happened? Well, what happened was, the shelves were empty of toilet paper. Next thing you know, the stores were rationing out 
toilet paper. So when the shelves start getting more and more empty and the food gets more and more bought and everything else and nobody's making it to put it back on the shelves, what's going to happen? What's going to happen, guys? Just like the toilet paper, the store is going to start rationing the damn food. I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. I'm crazier than a shit house rat. And I hope I am. But if I'm not, if I'm not, are you ready? That's my question. We haven't got to the fun part yet, guys. That's just, we're talking about food and toilet paper. We haven't got to the fun part yet. What about gas? What about gas for the cars? What about that? You guys thought about that? If people ain't, ain't you know, um, hauling the gas or diesel or any of that stuff because, um, you know, they're not making it because nobody's showing up to work. Here we go again. It's another problem, right? Here's the thing. Here's the thing that people don't realize. It takes time to find out there's a problem, right? Like, if we got that problem right now, we we won't know about it right now, right? The decisions that everybody's making staying home right now for unemployment, people don't realize right now what it's doing, okay? Now, here's the whole thing. We keep buying, we keep buying, we keep buying, we keep buying, we keep buying. We're not making shit. And guess what? When everybody finds out that we're running out of shit, guess what? Now we got a huge problem. Because how long will it take for it to get back in order? When people finally realize we're running out of stuff because sitting home was not a great idea. And we finally get to that point where we're running out of food. Now, as far as food, I'm talking about the man-made stuff. The fun stuff that everybody likes to eat. You know? So, so just think about that, guys. And just be ready. And, um, you know, if you're that guy that's got a bunch of car notes, and or you're that guy that's barely making it, or you're that guy thinking about whatever it is you're thinking about, man, just, just chill out, hold out, and wait. Let's see how this year plays out. I mean, that's my opinion. You guys are all grown. Do what you want to do. But just know something. After you watch this video or listen to this video, and uh, and you don't take heed to this message, and um, all shit breaks loose, the only person you're gonna be able to blame is yourself. I realize everybody wants to sit back and well let me let me let me take let me let me rewind and take that back not everybody but I realize there's people out there that think a brand new truck is the way to go and it's not all the way like that you know if you got a fleet and you want to get new a new truck here and there I mean it is what it is but if you're an owner operator right now and you're deciding if you want to get a new truck or an older truck, you're taking more of a gamble getting a brand new truck than you are a used truck. I know you're going to disagree with me and it don't matter. This is just my opinion. You know, with the older truck, you have less stuff to go wrong. Older trucks, sometimes you can just have pliers and screwdriver and, you know, some bubble gum and, 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 and duct tape and fix it and go down the road still make your money. If there's still stuff to haul for you. But a brand spanking new truck with all these sensors, they are very unforgiving. You get that red check engine light, you get that limp mode, you get any of that stuff. That truck ain't gonna give a damn if you got a high payment or not. It's gonna shut down, and the best thing you do is pay for it to go to the dealership. 
And then you'll be on the mercy at the dealership. And when you're broke down, it ain't like you can call around and find out this, find out that, whatever. You have to go to the dealership like everybody else. And they'll tell you this. This is how this goes. Yeah, we got your truck. It's going to take us two weeks before we can look at it. Damn, two weeks? Yeah, two weeks. All right. And in your head, you're thinking, not bad. Two weeks to look at it. But that's just to look at it. Once they look at it, how long do you think it's going to take for them to even find the problem? Two days? Three days? A week? Now you're in it three weeks. Three weeks. And then once they find the problem, guess what? You're already sweating bullets. It's three weeks. Now you got another payment coming up. Everything else. All, all your stuff's going on. Then, then, then guess what they tell you? So we found the problem, sir. But. And that's when you're thinking like, ah, oh, crap, man. What do you mean, but? And then they tell you, but. The sensor or whatever part you need is on back order. Well. If it's on back order, that just means there's people in front of you in line that gets this part before you get the part. And here's how honest they are when they talk to you. It's on back. It's been on back order for a month. We're hoping we'll get it in the next couple of weeks. Okay. But what they don't tell you is, when it comes in a couple of weeks, do you get one? See, if it's on back order, they might order like twenty. But when it shows up, they might only get four. That's how it works at the dealership. They can order what you want. But they got to make sure every single dealership gets, when they order stuff, they make sure they get um, their fair share of parts. They're not going to let one guy get 20 of something and the other dealership gets zero of something. So if the warehouse only has 20, guess what? Everybody's going to have to share those 20. So your three weeks... Then the guy says, okay, we're on back order. We should, have an, we should have the part in two weeks. Guess what? Now you're in it for five weeks. Five weeks, people. And then two weeks show up. Hey, did you get the part? Yeah. You know, we got the part. You know, we ordered we ordered like 20 of them. Well, only three showed up, man. Only three showed up, you know. And that was for uh, uh, Billy, John, and Jack that's in front of you. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that, sir, you know. We're just waiting for the others to come in. And the next thing you know, your brand new truck with your brand new truck payments and your brand new trailer payments and, and all your payments and payments and payments. And you're an owner operator waiting and waiting and waiting. My question is, as a one truck owner operator or lease operator or whatever, do you think it's a smart idea right now of the possibilities of what could happen in, in the near future to get into a payment? Think about it. Now, if you got a cash truck, right? You know, that helps you, the truck sitting. But here's the thing. If you have a cash truck, Normally, you're not gonna go to the dealership. You're not gonna go to the dealership. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna go to the, find a little hole in the wall situation, you know. And they're gonna work on your truck and they're gonna fix your truck. And the and the thing is, is those older cash trucks, they're not gonna need all these fancy sensor sensors and dozer pumps and and you know all that kind of stuff on these trucks. On the older cash trucks, unless you need a starter or an alternator or a radiator or a hose, a belt, you know, something like that, they're still going to be running down the road. So, this is a video of awareness of just in case or just be careful or whatever you want to call this video. I believe in if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. And uh, this is what I see that could possibly happen in, in the near future, but guys, in the near future. So, once again, like I told you guys, if you guys are doing the Christmas thing, I know we're in August, I would go shopping right now. 
the closer you get to de December, the chances you're not going to have any gifts for Christmas. Now, next month, if they just, every goes balls out and every starting to work in the warehouse and everything's truly, honestly getting back to normal and you don't see everywhere you go saying help wanted signs, think about it. Everywhere you go, let me know. Put in the comment. Do you guys, everywhere you go, see see help wanted signs? I do. Everywhere I go, and including when I went to Texas, I see help wanted signs. That's got to go away before we see a change. Help wanted signs. And the problem is, if people don't get the help, they can't stay open like they're supposed to. They can't stay open like they're supposed to. Some places might even go out of business. When companies go out of business, what does that do for trucking? Again, that falls back on, that's less for us to haul, right? So, man. So, when we see the signs going away, we know it's a start of getting back to normal. We see more help on its signs in places we've never seen them before. That's a sign that's going to show you guys that it's only getting worse. Again, I'm not some wizard with a wizard ball or whatever of trucking. I just pay attention to what I see. And you should too. That's all. I'm just bringing what I see to your attention to maybe open your eyes up so you can see it for yourself. So my biggest question is this. If your truck goes in the shop and ain't got the part, are you going to be okay? If, in the, if it's in there for two, three weeks, you're going to be okay. If it's in there a month or two months, will you be okay? If they got to keep it for three, four months, are you going to be okay? Now don't say, so Cal, that's some BS right there. Well, let me tell you right now, it's happening to people that own a brand new car right now. There's a lot of brand new cars at the Ford dealership right now waiting on some chips. They went into the shop or got towed to the shop for problems and it's on back order and these people are making new car payments while it sits at the Ford dealership waiting on the chips. So it could happen. This ain't something I'm guessing. This could happen. So my question is, can you afford have your truck sit in the shop for three months, four months, five months, two months, a month. Can you afford it? Are you ready for it? It don't matter if you can afford it or not. Are you ready for it? Is that something you're ready to do? And if you're a person that hasn't bought a truck yet, you need to think about that. See, when you drive for somebody, you got no risk. So all you do is make money, put it all, put it all in your pocket, no risk. If something happens to that guy, guess what? No problem. You go get another job. Your family still gets the check and you don't have no risk. So that's my time on this video, guys. I hope this makes a lot of sense. And I really hope this gives you something to think about. Because I'm telling you, in this video, you might want to play it back and listen to it two or three times to get everything I'm trying to warn you guys about. Because what I see coming is not good. Not good for trucking, not good for nothing. And I'm a very positive individual. I'm very positive that we're gonna run out of stuff before people go back to work. And my question is, are you guys ready for it? That's my time, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, I'm out of here.